I'd like to welcome you to our Wheel and Anchor program, the Ultimate Nile Cruise. This is going to happen um, next year in March of 2022. Uh, and uh, this is really, really, uh, this is the way to see Egypt. If, if you're going to go on a trip to Egypt, this is the one. Um, for those who have not uh, been on one of our webinars before, I did see a few new names. Um, allow me to explain very briefly about what we are all, all about at Wheel and Anchor. And, um, you know, there, it's always nice when we have these webinars because we have so many people that have joined us eat, that even went on the program before. So it's, um, you know, they, uh, they don't need to um, learn about Egypt because they've been there for themselves, but it's all about the camaraderie and it's all about this like-minded uh, um, feeling that we all have as travelers that like to have a good time and learn a lot of things along the way and coming together uh, and uh, being part of exploring the world. And that's what our mission is at Wheel and Anchor. And for each and every one of you, my personal mission is that you become well-traveled and well-connected, um, that you uh, really have a chance to experience, to immerse yourself in all the wonderful cultures and so on around the world and meet all the wonderful people along the way, like our group that you can see here in the picture. Um, there's Eunice down in the bottom left corner of the picture. This is uh, the, that segment of our group that uh, flew down to see Abu Simbel um, in February of last year. Seems like an eternity ago uh, that we were there. Uh, and at the same time, uh, that feeling of standing in front of the incredible um, uh, statues of Ramses is something that you can simply never forget. Um, anyway, joining us on the call today, now I get to introduce you officially, uh, Eunice. Um, my name is Gordon. I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor. I'm joined by my colleagues, Joel and Paula. Paula's actually on holiday today, so she's not on our webinar, um, but Joel is going to uh, uh, take care of, of, of her role and answer any questions as they come in, or at least organize them for me. And our special guest, uh, Mohammed Yunus joining us all the way from Cairo. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Um, how's it going? Give us a, the, the one minute, what's going on in Cairo? How are you doing? <laughs> it's been an interesting well, year for all of us, hasn't it? Well, well, thank you very much. And for your kind guests for giving me the, the pleasure to do what I enjoy doing most, which is talking and talking about Egypt, my favorite country. So um, hello, everybody, those that I had the pleasure to be with, you know, it's so nice to be again talking about Egypt and introducing this whole new program. Uh, everything is going well here in Egypt. Uh, vaccination is actually going so good. Uh, four and a half million uh, vaccines are already given you know, to Egyptians and we're expecting by the end of this year, this is actually great news because this is going to be, you know, the boost for tourism, the boost we need, you know, to start inviting people that I would say that half of the, you know, the population would be vaccinated by the end of this year. And uh, as I said, you know, this is going to be, uh, um, you know, we started already with, you know, cities in the Red Sea coast, you know, they are all, all the staff working there, they are vaccine and we're doing the Nile on, on there. So next time you're coming, you'll be dealing with the vaccine. Uh, Egyptians working in the tourism industry and coming in contact you know, with you, which is going to be, as I said, you know, what the assurance that everybody will, will need to know about, you know, before great. To, uh, yeah. Terrific, Eunice. Thank you. Um, let's, um, so just to give a summary of what we're going to cover today. So we're going to take you, our members, our travelers who are curious about uh, this wonderful country of Egypt on a little trip. I'm going to be your guide. And actually, Eunice is going to be mostly your guide. Um, and the host for this trip. Uh, and uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a taste of what to expect on this wonderful Ultimate Nile, Nile cruise that we're heading to in uh, March of next year. Um, let's give a, a very quick overview of the program. I mean, first of all, Egypt as a country is, um, well, it hardly needs introduction. I mean, it is really uh, where you'll find the most significant uh, archaeological sites, I, I mean, arguably anywhere in the world. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, seven UNESCO sites and, and these, you know, the, the, the wonders of the world with the, the pyramids of Giza. Um, th there is so much to see in this country. And I think the, the one comment that I want to make, and, and, and Eunice, you can chime in for a second, but, you know, there's been quite some political turmoil in past years. Um, but the key is that it's all past now. And I, I think that anyone who was on our trip last year would 
would agree with me that um, you know it comes across as such a friendly and safe place to visit. Uh, and it's, you know, it's open again for business. I mean, again, temporarily closed because of COVID like the rest of the world. Um, but aside from all that, you know, politically speaking, um, this is really probably one of the best times to go to Egypt with all the exciting things that are happening in the country. We're going to talk about a few of those things. Um, and um, I'll let I'll let Eunice give us the details of some of the highlights we're going to see along the way. Let, let me just summarize the overall itinerary. Of course, we're going to fly into Cairo on this trip. We're going to spend the first few nights at the wonderful Mina house adjacent to the pyramids in Giza on the outskirts of Cairo. We're going to hop on our Dahabia, which I'll explain in a minute, head down the Nile, finish up in Aswan at the, uh, at the old cataract hotel. Uh, and that will be um, our trip. And uh, it will be 10 or no, uh, 12 incredible days, incredible memories that will get made along the way. So it's your turn now, Eunice, um, as we look at the day by day itinerary. Of course, we're going to arrive in from Canada. There's a number of different options to get to Cairo, uh, but we won't cover that now. Um, you'll likely arrive in the morning and boom, you will be in one of the uh, craziest, most cosmopolitan, most congested cities in all of Africa. <laughs> I mean, uh, how do you think people, uh, as as newcomers to to Cairo, see the city as they <laughs> as they arrive in it for the first time? Very busy. You know, we're talking here about almost one fifth of the, of the population of the whole country are living in one city. You know, the city of Cairo, which have such an amazing feel into it. You know, very energetic. The city that doesn't sleep actually. So if you go at four o'clock in the morning, you'll find people walking down the streets and cars and everything. Very buzzing city. And as I said, you know, it's a city which got. I can show you things there, which dates back to almost five thousand BC. How many cities in the world you can say that it? You know, its history goes back to five thousand you know years before the birth of christ so as i said it's a very going city very vibrant city and i think it's going to be a great start you know for the guests you know to just know what cairo is all about okay and Absolutely. then you know exactly seeing great things in cairo and then flying you know to the nile where you can just enjoy a relaxing you know the relaxing time that closing down the nile yeah, and and of course the Nile flies fl flows right through Cairo, and you know we'll be sailing down it. So it's I found it's it's always so interesting when you drive into the city, you cross the river, um, and to know that you know in a few days you'll be going through some of the most incredible parts through through um, in uh, in the southern part of the country. Uh, let's let's get into the the the, the meat and potatoes of it all. Um, our first full day, we're going to cover, of course, uh, uh, the pyramids themselves. Uh, and uh, just in your brief words, uh, and because there, there's so much to say about them, and, and this is one of the wonderful things about Eunice, uh, is that he weaves the story about how all of these uh, ancient civilizations are interconnected. Um, but just say for us a few words about the pyramids and, uh, you know, beyond their status as one of the great wonders of the world. Tell us the most significant thing about them. <laughs> Well, the most, you know, it's, it's the sole surviving wonder of the seven wonders of the ancient world and how they were built, we don't know, they are just there out of 118 pyramids that we have in Egypt, those are the most fascinating, the, the, the nine pyramids actually you will see at this plateau, which we call the Giza plateau so as i said you know we're talking about more than 30 million tons of stones where you built, you know used for building those those pyramids and as i said, the precision and the perfection in building them you know it's just phenomenal and you, it just they just look small from a distance but you just need to be standing right at the foot of the pyramid and looking at them to have this feel of of how and when and you will be just dazzled you know by the sheer size of those magnificent pyramids so i, I think it's it's a great start you know to, to see the earliest stuff you know that we have here in in egypt first day going to the pyramids and going to the step pyramid seeing that the absolutely the first pyramid ever to be constructed in history of mankind first time for any nation to use stone as a constructive material they used it to build the pyramid at Saqqara the step pyramid we're going to visit we're going to visit also some amazing tombs over there the tombs of Saqqara with 
daily life scenes, you know, how did they fish, how did they, they agriculture, you know, cultivate the land, how, you know, just daily life scenes, all right, which yeah, give us a exactly. beautiful about, you know, Egypt. So I think it's a great start, you know, doing the pyramid day at the first yeah. day of arrival. It is, it is indeed. And uh, it, it, it will be, I mean, every day I think of the program is to highlight, um, but this this one will 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 certainly be, you know, the the climax at the beginning, if you will, <laughs> of the trip. Um, but the next day, uh, we, we are going to take in the Grand Egyptian Museum. And of course, this this um, is uh, was meant to open, it was already meant to open a couple of years ago. And there was just one delay after another. And of course, the latest one being, you know, the, the, the pandemic itself. Um, this one is going to be one of the most significant museums in the world. Uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum. And Joel, if you could just advance the uh, slides um, uh, that is uh, slated to open finally later this year. You still haven't been inside, but what I, are a I'm couple of things? I'm super excited. You cannot imagine, you know, <laughs> just waiting to see what's there because uh, they also have a lot of pieces on display there that they haven't been exhibited before. So I would be going, you know, inside that museum and seeing pieces for the first time ever in my life. Also, the thing of fascinating thing about it that is, it's, it's a state of the art museum. This is going to be like set the model of how museums should be built, you know, later on around the world. Yeah. A billion dollar invested in this Grand Egyptian Museum, and the crown jewel of it will be the full collection of King Tutankhamun, all his jewelry, all his masks, all the coffins. Everything is now being taken from the Cairo Museum in the city center of Cairo in downtown. And they are now beautifully displayed in the new Grand Egyptian Museum. And as I said, you know, I'm just so looking at that. The opening of that museum will have a remarkable boost in tourism. And I think people have been here, you know, for so many times, you know, they would just, it's, it's good enough to just come to see that museum and leave Egypt. Yep. Exactly. And I think... And, and I think those that decide to come on this trip will be among the first guests um, in, this, in this, this spectacular miracle. So, um, so, uh, so we'll, uh, the, the opening couple of days will be very exciting. We then um, hop on a plane on a short flight from Cairo down to Luxor, um, and we arrive uh, at this incredible vessel that will be our home for the next first few days, uh, for the next five, five nights. Uh, and uh, so we decided to do this program a bit differently this time. Um, we were on a, a, a wonderful vessel, um, the members that were with us last year in January, um, but with all the changes that are happening in the world, we decided to do this um, really a, a very exclusive type trip on what they call a Dahabia. And a Dahabia, Eunice, as I understand it, is, is uh, well, it, what is the definition of a Dahabiya or, or how do you describe it, um, historically speaking? Well, uh, they started actually by the um, 1900s. First tours to be sold in Egypt for tourists were sold by Thomas Cook. And they had like steamers, you know, at that time, you know, working up and down the line between Cairo and Aswan and the Dahabiyas as well. So they started taking, you know, all the aristocracy or the uh, men of state, you know, anyone who'd like to do a, a, an exclusive sort of tour, you know, of five, ten people, you know, just mm -hmm. to have their own private sailing boat, you know, going down up the Nile, you know, they will use the uh, the habit, yeah. And of course, and, you know, by the seventies, we started building the big cruises, you know, which is takes like maybe a hundred and you know forty passengers, some of them, you know, at the time, in a boat like this, you know, I think it just takes maximum of twelve guests, you know, on on board. Well, we actually have 12, uh, th that's right. We have uh, six cabins, 12 guests, up to 12 guests. You can see some of the uh, the pictures, the, the uh, beautiful, sumptuous amenities on board. Basically, it's like having your private trip down the Nile, you know, the greatest waterway in the world. Um, along the way, you'll have Eunice, um, who'll be there to show you all the incredible sights. We were talking about this the other day. I mean, that being on the Nile in a, in a, in a boat like this, it's not a ship anymore. This is really a boat. Um, this, this, you're, you, can, you can reach out and touch the water uh, of, of, as I say, the most you know, the significant waterway in the world. Actually, this is this is the beauty of it. It's you know because when you are on the top deck, for example, in a, one of the big cruisers, you are maybe twenty meters from. This is 
you're just looking into the now. And the experience, you know, just opening, sitting on your bed and just opening the window. And the night is just over there. You know, this is just amazing. Also, a great advantage of them that we have overnights in very nice, interesting places along the Nile. We don't have the regular, you know, docking areas for all the big cruises, you know. So it's also sort of a lot of, you know, enjoyment just to have different places, you know, and like islands, you know. So sometimes we just dock on an island. And sometimes we have a, a dinner on, on the island, you know. So as I said, you know, it's so much getting in tune with the now, a whole different experience. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, um, so that will be our home for the for the five nights of the trip. Let's touch on a couple of the, you know, some of the highlights that we're going to hit along the way. Obviously, we start in Luxor, um, and in Luxor, there, well, there's there's so much to see. Absolutely, absolutely. West Bank, East Bank, Karnak Temple. This is actually, we'll try, I'll try to do Luxor Temple at night, as you can see it, you know, beautifully lit, you know, one of the most beautifully illuminated temples you can see in the whole of, of Egypt. That's Luxor Temple. Earlier, we'll visit the largest temple to be built in the face of Earth, you know, Karnak Temple. That's 241 acres of land, you know, covered by Karnak Temple. And next morning, we'll do the highlight of the highlights, of course, visiting the Valley of the Kings, where all the great kings and pharaohs from ancient Egypt, you know, have been uh, buried. This is the uh, funerary temple of Queen Hatshepsut, the Valley of the Kings. And I think uh, Gordon is going to uh, throw a very special treat for that. Is that true, Jordan? That is correct. Yeah, we are going to visit this uh, tomb of Sete. Uh, did I pronounce that right? Sete the first. Um, yeah, and and so when we when we went to the Valley of the Kings last year, uh, we we already went and saw one of the tombs that's not in the normal. Uh, you know, it, it, how should we say? It, you, when you visit the Valley of the Kings, you, you typically get a pass that allows you to visit four tombs. I think it is four that are included in, right? And then we said, well, there's a whole bunch of other tombs that are just not generally open. You have to purchase special admission. Last year we went and uh, saw, I think it was Ramses the Sixth, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it was truly incredible. This time around, we're gonna see the most incredible tomb of perhaps all of them. Um, and and just, just a couple of words, Eunice, why is this one so important and why did you guys talk me into including it in the program? <laughs> well, 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 City the First, okay, is the best of the best. It's the best tomb we have in the whole country and it's the most artistic thing you will ever, this is the most, I mean, this tomb had been closed for almost 22 years and just two years ago, they opened it you know uh, but a very expensive ticket obviously to go uh, to minimum you know the number of guests you know going inside yeah. it's a very expensive I, ticket but it's included uh, in our program this time <laughs> uh, well this is this is an extra treat as i said I, first time i went to this i was shocked I, I felt i was out of this world i was living with the ancient egyptians just see any video of the scenes of city the first and as i said it's the colors and the quality of workmanship there is phenomenal and as i said this is another extreme highlight for for this tour in particular to be able to see the you know tomb of city the first in the valley of the kings indeed from from uh, from luxor we our our, our cruise continues up river we head then and stop at edfu uh which of course is the temple of horus uh and what i recall about this well i i mean we we saw so much history but you were able to really weave the story about how all of these um, pharaohs and so on were interrelated with one another and who built which one. And that's what made it so real for me because we've a lot of us have learned ancient Egyptian history in school, but it's all a bunch of names and facts and figures. And when you see these buildings in front of you, that's what makes it real. It makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, this is one of the most well-preserved temples we have in the country. You know, which dates back to almost 57 BC. And it's in a perfect state of preservation, lots of colors. And as I said, you know, it's a great temple dedicated to a great god, God Horus, the falcon god you see at the facade of, of the temple. So yeah, great, great temple to visit. Uh, great temple. 
And so each day, typically what our program is, is, is that, you know, we get up in the morning and we have our wonderful sumptuous breakfast on board the boat. We'll leave quite early to avoid, uh, you know, a lot of these places have quite a lot of uh, crowds. So we try to get there just to uh, uh, avoid the, the, the onslaught of all the visitors. Um, and we'll visit the temples in the morning. And then we'll have time to just relax, enjoy the ship. Some of these towns we can actually get off and wander around in, um, see the markets, see all of the, um, uh, the, the guys trying to sell us <laughs> souvenirs. <laughs> Always very much a part of visiting, uh, visiting Egypt. Um, the next day, uh, it's uh, Kamombo, um, the double temple. Yes, a great temple also dedicated to the crocodile-headed god, god uh, Sobek. And uh, as I said, this temple just overlooking the Niles, so just walking distance from where the, the our Dahabia will be moored, and we'll be there walking around that magnificent. You get to see some medical instruments used, you know, by the ancient Egyptians almost two thousand years ago. You can see the calendars, the numbers, the Nilometer, and you can see mummified crocodiles. So as I said, it's great temple to see also in route to Aswan, our final destination in this cruise. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so it um, it seeds it, the few slides that we are showing don't really do it justice to what you experience along the way. Um, we also go through the locks, um, which is quite an experience uh, because I recall we were bartering with some of the um, merchants in the river um, for goods that they were throwing up onto the ship. So there's so much life that happens along the banks of the Nile that's that's part of the experience. It's not just about these incredible archaeological sites. It's about, you know, this artery, this oasis, this, this long and narrow oasis that carves all the way through the country. Um, we'll, um, so we arrive then at Aswan. We spend a final night on the Dahabia in Aswan. Uh, and uh, before we then disembark and go to a wonderful hotel. Um, <clears throat> as one, of course, is, is among other things, of course, the dam, which is, um, ha has a, a whole history and, and story in and of itself. Of course, yeah. I mean, Aswan is considered to be like the southernmost city on the Nile. And by the 60s, we decided to build a massive dam. And that dam trapped a whole lake behind it you know which was called after the president who started the building of the dam lake nasser that's the largest man-made lake in the world you know it goes for almost 500 kilometers south so we'll be actually going on the body of the high dam of aswan to view it and to have this wonderful view you can see in the slide behind of the nile and seeing just the lake you know crossing down you know from the dam for the other side you'll get to see the very beginning of lake nasser it's actually a beautiful city of Aswan, one of my favorite cities in, in the country. It's an amazing city. And I recall, I mean, we went to visit the, uh, the, 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 the perfume factory, the factory, all mm -hmm. of the, um, the extracts mm -hmm. uh, that go into the fresh. Was it was an incredible uh, experience. You know, a lot of us didn't really expect um, to see along the way that we we were able to uh, to catch in in Aswan, um, while in Aswan, so after we uh, spend a night there on the ship, the next day we'll check out uh, and uh, we'll we'll stay for for the last two nights of our trip at the Old Cataract Hotel, um, and this is really a a, a bastion of history itself. Uh, you know, as it says in the in the subtitle there, "Death on the Nile." Uh, apparently, Agatha Christie spent a an entire year. When you see the hotel, it's no surprise to me that she didn't want to leave um, because it's tr it's truly it's really something quite spectacular overlooking the Nile, um, and uh, so we'll from here we'll be able to enjoy a couple of days and, and soak up the city a little bit more. Uh, and it, what what else about this hotel? I, I mean, this is like the place to stay in not just in Aswan but in in all of Egypt, I think. Well, it's by far one of the most beautiful hotels to start with you know in the whole country and uh, it's also a very iconic it's, it, it used to be a palace for the royal family in, in Egypt and then in 1899 you know Thomas Cook used it as a hotel so basically all celebrities men of state you know they have like a, a corridor there with all the celebrities I remember still, seeing that. yeah in, in the hotel you know and as I said uh, just sitting on that terrace and watching the sun just sitting every day you know 
watching the Felucas, uh, all the young uh, children in small little boats, and they are uh, rowing, you know, <laughs> just trying to, you know, uh, sing the tourists, you know, in Felucas, you know, songs. It's just perfect, you know. So as I said, it's a very nice way to spend a couple of days in the relaxing city of, of Aswan. Lovely pool, and as I said, a lovely selection of restaurants over there. Fantastic. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to our slideshow. It seems to have uh, have disappeared there, but we'll carry on uh, nonetheless, and hopefully Joel will be able to fix our problem. So um, one of the things that we'll do uh, in uh, an option for those that wish is to fly down to Abu Simbel. I showed the photo of our group there that was there last year, um, and uh, it's uh, about a 40-minute flight um, to the almost the very southernmost part of Egypt um, uh, on Lake Nasser. And of course, well, tell us briefly, uh, uh, Eunice, what happened with Abu Simbel, why it is so significant, why we would make bother to, to do this extra optional trip down here. Well, it's one of dozen of dozen of temples built by one of the greatest pharaohs of ancient Egypt, Ramesses II. But what makes it so special that it's not a freestanding temple like the rest of the temples you get to see on the Nile. It's not blocks of stones placed one on top of the other and you know they carried on building. No, with Abu Simbel, that's a totally different story. It's a mountain which was 65 meters in height, and they decided to carve into it the temple itself. So the four colossal statues you're looking at right now, which are 21 meters each in height, the seven meter entrance you see over there, the temple itself goes for 60 meters depth right in the heart of the mountain. There's lots of statues, the amazing scenes and colors you see. It's all one piece of stone. Again, mountain carved in a form of not just one temple, but two temples, one for himself, and he built another one for his most beloved queen, Queen Nefertari. So as I said, the two temples are side by side. And those temples, by the way, were moved from the original location, you know, because they were going to be submerged under the rising water of Lake Nasser I talked about. So they were had to be cut to blocks of stones and moved to a higher level where they have been reconstructed once again. So you're not going to see them at the original site. They have been moved, which, as I said, is going to be also quite uh, amazing just to talk about and learn about when you come and see those temples. Yeah, of it is. And it's, you know, it's uh, it's definitely a bit of an expense to go down there. But I can certainly say that everybody that took the trip with us was was really blown away and said it's absolutely worth it to do. Of course, there's lots of other things to do in Aswan, and I know that uh, those that stayed behind really enjoyed themselves thoroughly in the city, um, you know, checking out the market uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and viewing the, the Aga Khan mausoleum from the other side of the river and the Felucas, as you say, um, and not to mention, frankly, just spending time, and this is part of the reason why we built this into the program, is to enjoy the hotel and enjoy um, sitting on the, the wonderful terrace, overlooking the Nile and the desert in the background, watching the sunset. I'll tell you, it's just one of those um, places that you just want to spend some time. Um, so also, uh, it's also to go and have a look at the uh, the, the Nubian uh, villages. You know, there is Nubian, we can arrange for a multiple, I just can take whoever interested and we can go, there's a beautiful botanical gardens over there, you know, where you get to see them. It's called Lord Kitchener's Island. And, and as I said, a great diversity of plants and trees over there. The bird life is phenomenal over there. I know a bit of some, you know, bird watching, you know, if someone is interested, you know, then also we can go and see one of those Nubian villages and learn about the culture and the traditions, you know. As I said, it's a great way to be able to stay, spend some time, relax time in Aswan to explore Absolutely. more. Absolutely. And I think that uh, those of us that were there wish we could have spent more time. So this trip definitely affords us the possibility to spend some more time um, in Aswan. And, but at the, I, unfortunately, at this point, we'll have to uh, say, say goodbye to, uh, to, uh, to Egypt and we'll depart from Aswan. And I suspect that um, some of our members may want to spend a couple of extra days either in Aswan, frankly, or, or in Cairo. Uh, and of course, we can uh, certainly arrange that uh, so you can maximize your time, your enjoyment of, 
um, of this incredible country. Um, let me uh, run through a few of the details about this program um, before we uh, take your questions. If you do have some questions, will be coming up at the Q&A session. Uh, please let me know. So this program priced at 59.80 Canadian double um, and uh, a bit more for those with a single room because of the, 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 the Dahabia and the nature of that ship. Um, the program is quite inclusive. We have five-star hotels, um, the, the Mina House Hotel, which um, we neglected to mention that's right next to the pyramids um, and is an, yet another historical um, uh, complex in and of itself uh, is, is where we stay in Cairo. And of course, the, uh, the Cataract Hotel in, uh, in Aswan. Uh, and then everything else, all of our meals aboard the ship. Um, the, the wonderful services and, and stories of, of Eunice, which make the whole thing worthwhile. Uh, and so uh, really it is quite a fully packed program. Uh, of course, as with most of our programs, uh, the airfare is additional, but we can help facilitate all that. And all the other stuff like Abu Simbel is something we, we're happy to discuss with you, um, whatever else that you might um, need to enjoy this, this, this super special trip. Um, uh, talking about airfare, um, I remember when uh, when I went over there last year, I took Egypt Air, uh, which in the past used to be one of those airlines that you tended to avoid. I was blown away. I, I the, the aircraft was brand new. The service was phenomenal. Um, and from Toronto, for those that are flying out of Toronto, uh, you can make one one stop, hop over, and and boom, you're in Cairo. It's a great way to go. But there are lots of other connections from other cities across Canada. And again, we will be happy to counsel you on that. Um, so if you have uh, any questions uh, about this program, I'll take a couple of minutes. Um, before I do that, just to mention that um, we will be uh, having next week our five by five program, uh, our, the first in our series of uh, five by fives, which is covering the Scandinavia and the Baltic countries. Please do join us for that. Um, that's on next Thursday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and uh, if you didn't already sign up, you'll find the link to sign up for that in our newsletter this coming Saturday. Um, so uh, uh, just a couple of questions have come in. If, if there are any others, please let me know. So, so Troy asked, uh, again, I think you said this, Eunice, but when exactly is the Grand Egyptian Museum opening? We, we haven't finalized it yet, but most probably it will be in October of this year in october of this year yeah 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 okay yeah. cool yeah i know it's been put off for a long time but i know at the same time they're also anxious to open it yeah, um I mean, it's ready and, and and to open at any time but it's just waiting for the right moment you know for tourism also, also you know to come you know and, yeah, yeah so that's that's it yeah it, it, it's got to be the right time um, Fran asked about uh, if there's enough free time in Cairo to see the garbage city. And I know that Fran is asking that question because it was such a special experience uh, <laughs> that we had. Um, and uh, we, we, uh, we didn't actually include it in this program, uh, but we will, uh, we will make time for it either in the context of the itinerary that we have there or um, spend an extra night or two and we'll, we'll set that up uh, because it was, it was uh, an unexpected uh, highlight of the yeah. trip to go and see this so-called garbage city. And uh, I will, uh, anybody that's interested, I'll tell you more about that. I'm and happy to home home uh, In Cairo as well. Pardon me? And we are doing the home hosted dinner in, in Cairo. Having... Home hosted dinner as well in Cairo. We, we didn't mention that either. That's right. We're going to actually have dinner with a Egyptian family at their home. Um, once again, it, there's so many aspects of this trip that we can hardly fit it all into one webinar, um, but it is mentioned in the brochure. So any things that I neglected to mention. Um, um, uh, we have a question here. What's the temperature like in March? Um, well, it's definitely warmer than it is in January. Um, when we went last time, I think we found it a little bit cooler uh, than, uh, than was expected. Um, but March, I guess the temperatures typically would be in the low 20s during the day, Eunice? Yeah, it would be perfect. I mean, March this, of this year, it was like mid 20s. So it was just perfect. And a you little know, bit cooler in the evening. So the weather and, is... Uh, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But not, not, not like really cold, you know, but I, I would say, you know, like a light jumper or something like that, because March, yeah, yeah, exactly. is, the best to warm up March is the best time to go. Absolutely. Um, 
Then uh, Chris asked the question, if we get to see any of the temples at night, that's a good question, actually. Uh, and I know that uh, with the uh, schedule of that Dahabia, um, is there the possibility, for example, the Philae temple is one where they have a sound and light show, if I'm not mistaken, in, in Aswan. Um, yeah. And so, <clears throat> pardon me. No, you are absolutely right. You know, when we are in Aswan, what we can offer is to visit the Sunny Lumiere or the Sun and Light Show at Philae Temple. Also, another highlight, a beautiful temple built on an island. And uh, also, we're going to plan doing Luxor Temple at night. So we're yeah. going to start with Kainak Temple and then go and do Luxor by the set, sunset time. So the guests, by the end, you know, leaving, you know, the temple will see totally floodlit, which is also another great experience. Which, is, which would be a tremendous experience. And it was one thing that we didn't, other than the, 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 the pyramids at Giza, we didn't get to see the, any of the other temples at night, but we have time in this program to do that. That answers Chris, Chris's question. Uh, Judith asked about the optional trip to Abu Simbel. I think we have that for 590 Canadian dollars, which includes the, the a majority of that is the airfare down to uh, Abu Simbel and back. So we fly down in the morning and we come back in the early afternoon uh, for that program. So Judith will be happy to give you more information about that. And I think that wraps up all of our questions. So Eunice, I'd like to um, take a moment. Thank you once again for uh, joining us all the way from Cairo. And uh, we really, really appreciate your involvement in, in creating this program. And uh, we're looking forward to having our members join you next year. I am so looking forward to meet whole Canadian groups again. You know, I had so much fun in, in, in our last group that I can't wait. To, to be, you know, dealing and being with you for another 12, 12 days. Uh, one thing I can assure you that you think you come to Egypt and you will see today, starting with the pyramids, the most amazing thing you'll ever see. And, you know, and then next day, there's something coming to top this up. And it never stops. The whole 12 days, whole amazing experiences. And it will be always a pleasure to, to talk about, you know, the history of Egypt, not just the history, but also about modern, about the day-to-day -day, uh, history of, uh, or, and, you know, what's happening in Egypt and about our culture. And as I said, it will be uh, amazing to see you on the Nile uh, once again. Those who have been with me before, coming on this tour, there will be totally different experiences, different jokes, different laughs. And as I said, I'm so looking forward to it. Thank you very much for considering and supporting and coming to, to each of thinking about it. Okay, thanks again. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if I see a couple other questions, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, drop you an email back. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you again and uh, look forward to catching up with you again next week.